Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about fungi. Fungi is a pretty diverse group. It's things that you're familiar with, like a mushroom, but it's also things that are much smaller than that, like a uh, yeast, which are going to be single cell fungi. And they're also going to form sometimes symbiotic relationships. So lichen, for example, is a symbiotic relationship between a fungi and then an algae. And so not only do they break down a decomposed material, but they're also going to serve uh, another role, working symbiotically with both algae and then plants to allow them to function uh, better. And so basically, if we look at their phylogeny, so this is the eukaryotes. So we're going to talk about things now that have a nucleus and have organelles. And you can find here that here's our fungi. In other words, when we try to classify all eukaryotes, we're going to put them right here. If you look at animals, animals are going to be right here. And so what does this mean? Well, we're going to share more recent common ancestry with fungi than we are with plants, which are going to be way back here, because we put green plants way over on this side. And so we probably have more in common with a fungi, especially the way we live our life, than we do with green plants. But we're not directly related to them. Um, this is more into the phylogeny of the actual fungi. And again, we get this from the Tree of Life project. And so you can see that we have this break off like this. And there are monophyletic groups. In other words, there's going to be some groups that you should know because we know that these things all share common ancestry and they're one group. And so there are going to be five of those, Chytridium mycota, Zygomycota, Glomerulomycota, Ascomycota, and then Basidiomycota. And so these are ones that you do need to know because they're monophyletic and they're important when we're studying biology. But before we get there, let's get to the characteristics of fungi. Well, they're eukaryotic, so they've got uh, nuclei and organelles. They're heterotrophs. They originally were classified as plants, and you can see why. It almost looks like a plant, and they don't move. They don't run around like animals. And they almost have these root-like structures that look like plant roots. And so we used to classify them as plants, but they're not. They eat material, and they're going to digest material. I'll show you some cool examples of that in just a second. They have cell walls, so that separates them from us, also the fact that they don't move. And those cell walls are made of a polysaccharide called chitin. Uh, the exoskeleton of insects are made from that similar structure. Um, most of the inside of the structure is actually going to be filamentous. In other words, it's made of filaments. And so this would be the filaments in a mushroom. You can see these thin little filaments. You can see the cell wall going around the outside of it. But they're not going to have any true tissues. In other words, they're not going to have, for example, uh, muscle tissue or nervous tissue. It's just going to be a group of these hyphae, they call these. That's what these filaments are called. Uh, over and over and over again. And so even if we were to look in here to these fruiting bodies of these mushrooms, we'd find that they're hyphae just packed together really, really tightly. Or if we were to look at the roots of them, those are going to be hyphae absorbing nutrients. And so those are some of the characteristics shared by all fungi. They're all heterotrophic. And so if you see one growing out of this tree or this rotting tree, they're digesting the material inside there and they're eating. And you can see here that this mold, which mold is kind of a term that just means a fast growing fungi, you can see this mold is breaking down this uh, fruit. And if you've ever had athlete's foot, you've been infected by a fungus as well. And so this right here is um, a fungus growing in between the toes, and its hyphae will actually grow into the tissues of the person's foot. It secretes an enzyme, and then it digests that material inside. And it's really painful because it's starting to digest the nerves on the outside of the foot. And my fa one of my favorite fungi of all is this Anthrobotrys. Basically what they do is you can see the hyphae that they're growing here, but they'll make these tiny little rings. And then when you have a worm like this, this is called a nematode worm. Basically, if the nematode worm starts to swim through this ring, it will cinch tight on the, on the nematode worm. It'll grab a hold of it, and then it's going to digest it from the outside in. And so this is an animal-eating fungi. And so what could be much cooler than that? Um, how do they reproduce? Well, they re do reproduce a lot of the time asexually. And so when you have um, mushrooms just continuing to grow out and out and out and out, and they can grow relatively quick, that's going to be asexual. But then they can also have a sexual phase as well. And so the spores that come out of a puffball like this are usually going to be asexual spores. They can spread to an area where there's a little bit of water, some food, and they can start growing. But there's also sexual portions. So these were formed through a sexual process. If we look at this mushroom right here, basically what you get are, this would be a basidiomycete. Basically, you're going to have spores that fall down. You get the growth of a new mushroom, but then we can have sexual reproduction producing more spores. And so there's a variety of ways they reproduce. 
Like I mentioned at the beginning, there are five important phyla that you have to know when it comes to studying fungi. And I classified them from A to Z. This is just a quick way that I remember it. So we've got A, B, C, and we've got Z over here. So we go from A to Z, A, B, C, and then we got G in the middle, and the G can stand for... Um, golly, aren't those fungi cool? Because these ones are going to be really cool in just a second. And so let's go from A to Z. So the first ones are the Ascomycota. Ascomycota, the Asco or the Ascus, that's what uh, Ascus means, means cup. So Ascus means cup fungi or sac fungi. And you can see right here is this is that sac and then the spores are going to form on the inside of that. And that's why we call it the Ascomycota. Why are these important? Well, this is my favorite fungi of all. This is the morels. We like to go hunting them in the spring. They taste delicious, but they're really hard to find. You're looking right here at the sexual portion of that, but you can see these sacs on the inside or the sac right here. But ascomycota are also important. So penicillin is a fungus or an ascomycote uh, that is going to make a lot of the antibiotics that we have. And so they're important for that. If we look at basidiomycota is the next one, so that's the B. Basidium comes from the word basidium, which means club. And you can see that on the underside of a mushroom, they're going to have these little gills. But if we zoom in closer, we're going to find these club-like structures. And each of those club-like structures is going to form spores. We'll have four spores that are found on this basidium, and that's where the name basidiomycote comes from. It's club fungi. And so what are the big ones? These are going to be the mushrooms um, that we think of when we think of fungi. Those are going to be basidiomycota. If we look at these two together, sometimes we would say these two share common ancestry, ascomycota and basidiomycota, and we sometimes call these the top fungi. What's next? Next is the C, so that's going to be chytridiomycota, and these are going to be sometimes referred to as the chytrids. These used to be classified as protists, and the reason why is that they have a flagellated stage where they'll actually swim around. We now know that they're true fungi. Um, you've, you've read about these in the news because we've seen uh, on the planet huge increases in deaths of frogs, and a lot of those are related to chytrid fungi that are infecting the frogs. All right, let's go to the G then. So the G stands for the glomerulomycota. Glomerulomycota are very important because what they'll do is they form a symbiotic relationship with plants or a plant symbiosis. So what we have are these mycorrhizal relationships. And so this right here is the root of a plant, but you can see the fungi growing inside it. And almost all plants, in other words, every plant that we look for has these relationships between the glomerulomycota and their roots. What does that give them? Well, that gives them increased surface area, and it's allowed them going to take in more water, and then they give these fungi a place to live. And so it's a great relationship for both the fungi and for the plant. And then the last one's going to be the zygomycota. Zygomycota, its name comes from the zygosporangia, which is going to be this resistant uh, structure where the spores are actually formed in. It'll rupture, and then we get this uh, uh, a hiss as those spores are spread out. If you look at that, a bunch of them together look like that, and a whole bunch of them together are going to look like this. So this is a bread mold, zygosporangia, uh, that you're familiar with. And so basically what happens if you leave some bread out, one of these spores is going to land on it, and we're going to get the growth of this fungus. What's the fungus eating? It's eating the bread, because that's what they do. They're heterotrophs. And so can you remember those five important phyla of fungi? Ascomycota, Basidiomycota, Chytridomycota, glomerulomycota, and zygomycota. And they're all just different types of fungi, uh, and fungi serve a huge role on our planet. They break down material when it's dead and dying. They recycle those nutrients, but they also form these uh, symbiotic relationships with plants and algae. And I hope that all is helpful.